His handle moved slightly out. It's now melted into the moving mechanism. I'm headed out into the rain. It's absolutely tracking it down. But I'm heading out because I'm told on good authority that my picture's in the paper today. So we're gonna go and have a little look. <laughs> if it's there, we're gonna pick up a copy for me and one for my mummy. Because it's just gotta be done. <laughs> so rainy. You see that a friend has just texted me a photo. It's probably of the newspaper. I'm not going to look at it because I don't want it to spoil my surprise. <laughs> I want to see it myself first. I wonder if it's sold in here. No? I worry if this is going to be like that time that I tried to buy the Financial Times in one of the shops near my house, which isn't a typical area for people who buy financial newspapers. And I went into my local shop and said, ha, uh, do, you, do you have the Financial Times? And he laughed at me. He laughed in my face. Okay, new shop. Let's try this one. home and I have two copies of this paper. I can't believe I'm in an actual newspaper. I've obviously had stuff published online before but there's something that feels a bit different by having it in print. So I've kept a copy for me and a copy for my mum. I also shared about it on my social media today and just added a little bit of context, a little bit of correction actually to some of the things that were quoted because there was a little bit of a little bit of creative license with uh, some of the direct quotes that um, were not exactly what I said. So I just give a couple of updates. N none of it was, none of it was uh, seriously wrong. There was just a couple of bits that wasn't quite what I said. And um, you know, language is powerful. Language is important. So it's important to me that if someone is quoting me, that they are quoting me accurately. Anyway, I guess I ought to do a project today. Let me show you what we're going to be working on. Today we're going to do a little DIY from this little alleyway. Here is a little pile at the bottom that has a collection of objects that I've been saving. These are things that I need to keep, <laughs> to keep safe because I need to do particular jobs with them. So this is something that needs to be hung in the garden for my hose. This is a blind that needs to be put up. These are some brackets that need to go outside. So I put everything in one place so that I don't lose it. These are some hooks that I want to put up in my little hallway near my front door. Luckily I'm able to find them because they're in my little special place. And I thought what a opportunity, what a good opportunity to show you how to drill into masonry. So let's do that now. Don't think there's any screws that come with them so we'll have to find some screws as well. I'm going to start off by picking some screws and some plugs. I just pulled these screws out. I like the length of them and I've gone into my plug box and found some plugs that are a good width and a good length for these screws. How do I know that? So I want the screw to not go further than the plug. So when it's screwed in there, it will go to about there and it won't protrude out at the end. It also fits. I just pop that in there just to see if generally it fits. You don't want it to be so narrow that it just slides in because then it's not going to catch on the edges. But also it does actually need to fit in there just a little bit. If you had a screw that was twice the thickness it just wouldn't be a big enough hole to fit the screw. So that's about the right size. I've got six here. How many screws? One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm also going to double check. I'm happy with how these screws sit. That's nice. They could even 
be a have a slightly smaller head so that they sit in the recess and that wouldn't be a problem but I'm happy with how that looks I don't think that looks too intrusive if the screw was bigger it wouldn't fit flush and it would look a little bit silly and it would stand proud this is just the right right the, the right width okay let's go I also intentionally went for these gold screws because they're going to be the right color to match with these brass hooks. <laughs> this is my little hallway in the front of my house, my mini porch, and this is where I want to put the hooks. I have previously had these little moldable hooks here. They work really well. I like them, but I've decided that I want to have some brass hardware to match what I've got in the rest of my property. So I'm going to take these off. I'm going to screw in the brass hooks that I've bought. There's five here, I think. I'm going to have six and they'll just be used to hang things like shopping bags for easy access, maybe some hats some gloves. Got my brass shoehorn here. It's amazing how easily they come off given how strong they are. That's been up there for over a year. Let's do another one. Oops. <laughs> Looks like I should have used the blade all the way through. That's my fault. I have to get some paint and sort that out. Before you start drilling into a wall, any wall, you want to double check that there's not any wires behind there or anything that you shouldn't be drilling into. I actually happen to know what's behind this wall. That is the case with a lot of my house because I've put up stud walls throughout most of the house so I have seen what's behind and I know there's no wires. And typically in a porch like this you wouldn't have you wouldn't have electrics behind the wall but you never know what people might have done before you moved in. And so it's still a good idea to check with a stud finder with a metal detector to see what's behind your wall. And this will make a little beeping sound when it detects metal. So that could be indicating that there's some wires there, or it could be that there's a stud uh, behind the wall and it's picking up the little nails or the screws that are used to keep that board in place. I'm going to get along. Here's my brass shoehorn. I'm going to use this as an example Imagine this is in the wall for some reason. I don't know why it's in the wall, but it's in the wall. And we're going across. See, because it knows it's metal. It's picking up the metal. It even picks it up about an inch away from where it's actually sitting. That means that you don't get close to, to drilling in the wrong place. So I can certainly recommend one of these they're really helpful. You don't have to pick up an expensive one. I think this was about $6.99 or something like that. You might expect to find wires going in these sorts of directions from a light switch like this. So let's try it. Let's see when it activates. That's actually not the wires. That's the metal corner that sits on the edge of plasterboard to give it a flush finish. That's why that's going off. But let's see if there's wires going this way or this way. Okay. There is a wire going from this plug socket up in this direction. And I can even show you. There's the plug on the outside. It's a bit dark, but there they are. That's what it's picking up on the inside. It's picking up the directions that way. Now I'm gonna work out where I want my hooks to go. I'm using a laser level for this, but you don't need a laser level. You can just use a regular level. It's better if you've got a longer one because then you can check that it's level across the entire space. But if you don't have a longer one, you've just got a little one like this. You can add it upon a piece of wood and that will give you some more confidence that it's level, more so than doing it just by itself. The distance in between here is 80. So 
What's 80 divided by 4? So 20, 1, 2, right? So you've got 3, 1, 2, 3, then you've got 4 spaces side to side. Is that right? Is there one middle? Yes, that's right. <laughs> so when you're dividing, when you've got three sections, when you've got three hooks, you'll end up with four sections. So I've divided by 80 by 4, so then it's 20 centimetres between each hook. I've covered this before in one of my videos, but a question I have often is, how do you know what drill bit to use for what size plugs? That's the drill bit, that's the plug. And the answer to that is actually quite simple. They often tell you the size of the plug on the plug, the same with the drill bit. Now these are both a size six and you wanna find the matching number. If you've had a drill bit for a little while, sometimes the number can be rubbed off, but see if you can try and find it. And if you can't find a number on either, you can sort of measure them against each other. So there I'm just using the top end of this masonry drill bit, which has the little arrow head on the top. That's the widest part and that's the part you want to measure. And I'm just popping my plug on top of that to check they're about the same width. It can be, uh, you don't want this to be any wider than the plug because it's going to make a hole that's too big. By tapping on this wall, I know that this is masonry and that's why I'm using this masonry bit. This bit with the little hammerhead is designed for drilling into stone and brick and such like. If this was plasterboard, I would use some different types of plugs instead of these ones. These are designed for masonry. A different type is needed for plasterboard. Ooh. I'm using an SDS drill, which is a drill specially designed for drilling into masonry. Combi drill is the type where you can drill Screw, you can drive screws into wood, but you can also use it as a hammer drill as well. But drills that are specially designed for a particular job are going to do it better. A combi drill isn't quite as good or quite as efficient as drilling into masonry as this is. And certainly if you're doing a lot of drilling into masonry, you might want to consider picking one of these up. But a combi drill will do just fine for this job. But I'm going to use this because I have it to hand. If you're using a combi drill, you're going to want to turn it so the little drill function, there'll be a little hammer shape on the top and that will tell you that that's the correct one for drilling into masonry. When you come to drilling, you want to kind of work at this sort of angle. I'm using my shoulder here to actually push into the wall. This gives me a little bit extra, um, a bit extra strength, a bit extra pressure. It takes the effort out of what I'm doing. If I was drilling above my head, say the hole was here, I would get a little pair of steps so that I could be standing behind it like this because this will make the work a lot easier. You don't want to stand like this because you're too far away, you're not actually using your body weight. And if you've got an extra hand, that's also an easy way to give yourself a bit of extra support. Not all drills have this, maybe you want to hold it in a place that's not moving, like here. Another top tip. I will start, I promise, is to get a little bit of tape. I go only as deep as you really need to in the wall, which is the depth of the plug and maybe just a tiny little bit more because when you screw into the wall, there'll be loads of material left at the back that uh, might get in the way when you come in to push this in. So I usually just give myself a tiny, you know, couple of millimetres in addition to the, <laughs> in addition to the length of the plug. And I just pop a little bit of tape there. Measure that again. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And that will tell me where I need to stop. mess. Eee, there we go. Perfect. That's what we want to see. That's in there nicely. I'm going to move on to the other two. I'm going to clean the wall because I've made a terrible mess. 
handle moved slightly out, it's now melted into the moving mechanism. It's a bit silly. That's what happens when you're not paying attention. <laughs> this is a hammer drill. As I'm doing this, it's hammering. Don't really want it to do that, if I'm honest. I might go get my combi drill. Okie dokie. I've got my impact driver instead. This is the perfect tool for what I'm doing right here. There we go, some perfect hooks for my bags. I will need to go and just touch that up a little bit. I've got some spare paint downstairs from where I've taken off the previous hook. The only one that went in a little bit funny was this one because the hole where the screw goes into was a little bit skew with, so it went in at a bit of a funny angle, which is to do with its uh, manufacturing. But I will still get a little bit of blue paint and just touch up these couple of areas that have been left a bit skew with. Now they match beautifully with my other hardware. Pretty happy with that little DIY. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel.